Today on The Hookup, I'm going to show you everything that Tasmoda can do in August of 2019. We're going to cover topics like flashing methods, templates, commands, rules, and group topics. Even if you're a long-time Tasmoda user, stick around. For so many people, flashing their first store-bought device with Tasmoda represents the beginning of their smart home journey. Tasmoda started out as a custom firmware meant only for Sonoff devices, but it's transformed into an incredibly powerful tool for controlling everything with an ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. As Tasmoda has matured, new options have popped up to try to unseat the de facto standard, but I'm going to show you today why, in my opinion, Tasmoda is still the best option in most cases. If you don't know what Tasmoda is, this is my quick 45 second sales pitch for it. Tasmoda is an open source custom firmware that runs on any ESP8266 based device. Tasmoda gives users local control of their devices through either MQTT, HTTP, or web UI, and it comes packed with drivers to support basically every popular sensor or chip that you'd find in off-the-shelf smart home products. Tasmoda is extremely stable and reliable, and it allows your devices to be manually controlled in the event of a total network outage. Tasmoda is simple enough for a novice user and has enough advanced options to keep even the most seasoned automator happy. The more devices that you have with Tasmoda, the more standardized your smart home will become and the easier it will be to manage. This video is going to cover everything from flashing to advanced rules, and I've included timestamps down in the description to find what you need, or to link to as a reference for helping out other users. We're going to start with the flashing process, which will always be the first step in adding Tasmoda to your device. There are two general methods for flashing Tasmoda. There's over the air and hardwired using a USB to serial FTDI adapter. In my opinion, OTA is always easier when it works, but most of the OTA methods rely on exploiting vulnerabilities in factory firmware. So when companies like IT and Tuya learn about these vulnerabilities, they're usually pretty quick to patch them. Unfortunately, that means that depending on the manufactured date of your device, there's a good chance that attempting the OTA method will end in frustration and failure. That being said, when it works, it's a huge time saver. So I'll go ahead and leave the link to the Tuya Convert walkthrough and a Sonoff DIY mode tutorial down in the description. If those methods fail, then your next option should be to flash it using the hardware method. Some companies like Shelly make the process extremely simple by providing you with a set of female header pins and a wiring schematic while other products make it nearly impossible by gluing the outer shells together. In order to flash your device, you're going to need to access five different pins. RX, which is the serial pin that receives data. TX, which is the serial pin that transmits data. 3.3 volts and ground, which provide power to the chip. And finally, GPIO0. GPIO0 is necessary because attaching that pin to ground during the boot process of the ESP8266 causes it to go into a special flashing mode that prevents any other code from running on the device. Since my FTDI adapter has male header pins and most boards have either female headers or through holes in the circuit board, I have a set of female to male jumpers that I always use. I also created a special jumper wire that's a splitter so I can connect both GPIO0 and ground on the device that I'm flashing to the ground pin on my FTDI adapter. Once all the wires are hooked up, plug in your FTDI adapter to your computer and the ESP chip will boot into flash mode since GPIO0 is grounded. Next, you'll need to download one of the pre-compiled bin files for Tasmoda. So head on over to thehackbox.org front slash Tasmoda front slash release where you'll find the current stable versions of Tasmoda compiled on different versions of the ESP8266 Arduino core. At the top of the list, you'll see a few different variations of the compiled code. The difference between each of these bin files is that each one includes different driver files for various sensors and chips. As more driver files are included, the size of the image increases, and in some cases, your device may not have enough onboard memory to handle the largest bin file. However, in that case, you likely won't need all the driver files anyways, so you can just choose one of the smaller bin files. As a general rule, I use the sonoff.bin file for all of my devices. The other option you have on this page is to choose which version of the ESP8266 Arduino core that you want to use. Tasmoda offers versions compiled with Core 2.3.0, 2.4.2, and 2.5.2. Core 2.3.0 is widely regarded as being the most stable version of the ESP8266 core, and 2.4 and 2.5 both introduced some serious memory leaks that negatively impacted performance when they were first released. 
The major downside to using Core 2.3.0 is that it is still vulnerable to something called the crack exploit that allows a hacker to possibly compromise the encryption of WPA2 by forcing the reinstallation of an already known encryption key. That exploit has been patched in all other versions of the ESP core after 2.4.0. Personally, I use 2.4.2 for my Tasmoto devices, and I haven't noticed any stability issues. Let me know down in the comments if you've had connectivity issues using other versions other than 2.3.0. At this point, I use a program called Node MCU Pi Flasher to upload the bin file to my device. If you go to the Node MCU Pi Flasher GitHub page, and you don't read the directions, it seems like you might need to compile the program from source. But if you go to the releases tab, you can actually just download a pre-compiled exe file and get started immediately. A major advantage of the Node MCU Pi Flasher over the popular ESP Easy tool is that it gives you the option to erase the chip completely before putting the new program on it. In some instances, this could be completely necessary due to variables that can be stored in the SPIFS file system that could mess up your new install. So I always recommend checking that box. If you haven't already, plug in your FTDI serial to USB adapter Press the refresh button and select auto detect to find your ESP device automatically. Select the sunoff.bin file that you downloaded earlier and choose 115200 as the baud rate, D out as the flash method, and yes to wipe all data. Once you get the message that the flash was successful, you should see a new SSID pop up with the name sunoff with some numbers after it. If you connect to that SSID, you'll usually be automatically directed to a captive portal to input your Wi-Fi information. If you're not automatically redirected, then you can open up a browser and go to 192.168.4.1 to access the web interface. After you input the necessary information and press save, your device will reboot and you can find its IP address on your network by looking on your router or with a network inspection app like Fing. Whatever method you used, you should now be looking at a very basic Tasmoda homepage with Sonoff Basic as the module and Sonoff as the name. To avoid random restarts due to connection attempts, my first action in the Tasmoda interface is always to set up MQTT. You'll find that option by going to Configuration and then Configure MQTT. If you're not going to use MQTT and you're going to use HTTP only to control your Tasmoda devices, then you'll want to disable MQTT completely, not only for security, but also to avoid any random reconnect restarts. To do this, you go to console and then you'll type in set option three space zero and press enter. The next task is setting up the pins on your specific device for its connected relays, sensors, and outputs. This used to be the most time consuming part of a new Tasmoda installation, but with templates, all of that headache has gone away. After my Tuya convert video, it was my goal to set up a database of Tuya devices on my website. But at the same time, another user, Black Adder, set up a very similar database on his GitHub page. His database is great and it uses GitHub's pull request format to allow users to submit new templates and make corrections to existing ones. It's so good in fact that I actually just link to his template page on my website now instead of maintaining my old database. The Blackadder template database allows you to browse devices by region or type and each device includes a picture since many of these devices are actually just white label products that are being sold by many different resellers and they should all work with the same template. Once you find your device, all you need to do is copy the JSON text from the devices database, paste it into the template field of the configure other menu in Tasmoda, check the box that says activate, and then press save. Once your device restarts, you should now have a fully functional device with controls for each relay or light and a display for all of your sensors. At this point, you're finished with the general configuration of Tasmoda, but you've barely scratched the surface of what's possible. Next, you'll want to integrate Tasmoda with your home automation platform of choice. I'm not going to specifically cover each configuration in this video since we're talking about Tasmoda today and not home automation platforms, but I've got links down in the description for how to integrate Tasmoda specifically with Home Assistant, OpenHab, SmartThings, and Hubitat. If you're trying to stay hub free, Tasmoda also supports local Amazon Echo integration. To enable Echo integration, go to Configuration and then Configure Other. Here, you're gonna select Hue Bridge for your Alexa integration and change your device's friendly name. The friendly name is what will show up on your Amazon Echo app when you discover devices. If your device has multiple relays, you can create a friendly name for each one and your Echo device will discover each one separately. If you are integrating into a hub, both Home Assistant and OpenHab are gonna use MQTT to issue commands to Tasmoda, while SmartThings and Hubitat use HTTP. 
But the great thing is that all the commands are actually the same. And no matter what you need to do, whether you're changing the mode of a switch, turning off an LED status light, or calibrating the power usage of your device, you'll probably find a command for that option in the extensive Tasmoda documentation. When issuing commands via HTTP, you just point your web browser to the IP address of the Tasmoda device, and then you tack on cm question mark cmnd equals, and then the command that you want to issue. You're going to put in percent %20, which is how you input a space in a URL, and then the value that you want to issue in that command. For instance, if I wanted to change switch 1 from a momentary switch to one that always followed the state of the light switch, I'd send this command. After that, the Tasmoda device will respond with a JSON formatted message showing that my command was accepted and that specific setting was changed. If you're issuing commands via MQTT, the topic will be CMND, front slash device ID, front slash, and then the command that you're trying to use. And then for the payload, you put in whatever you want to change it to. So to change switch one back to a push button switch, I'd send the MQTT message to this topic with a payload of five, and Tasmoda will respond with a JSON formatted state message on the result topic, which for this device would be stat, front slash, cabinet lights, front slash, result. A huge benefit of using MQTT is that you can issue the same command to every Tasmoda device at the same time by using your Tasmoda group topic. By default, the group topic is sonoffs. So let's say you wanted all of your Tasmoda devices to report their current relay state to you. You could send an MQTT message to the topic CMND front slash sonoffs front slash power one. Then if you sent a payload of one, it would turn all your devices on, or a payload of zero would turn them all off. But if you send an invalid payload like check, it will cause all of your devices to send whatever their current state is. This method is commonly used to solve the problem that Home Assistant doesn't know the state of your MQTT devices after a restart. The group topic also makes things like changing your SSID and password super simple, since you can issue a single MQTT command to change every Tasmoda device in your house at the same time. If you choose to issue commands via the web interface, you'll just open up the console, type in your command, then space, then the value that you want to change it to. So to change a switch to an edge switch, or one that sends a toggle command every time the switch changes state, we'll just enter switch mode one space seven, and then you'll see the result issued in the console on the very next line. In certain cases, it may be beneficial to use something called the backlog command to enter many commands at once. An example of this would be if you're trying to change your SSID or password. If you just issued the single command SSID and then your new SSID, it would immediately change the Wi-Fi network to that new value, which would trigger the device to reboot. However, if you also needed to change your password, then your Tasmoda device wouldn't be able to join your new network and you'd have no way of issuing that command to set the new password. Instead, you'd use a backlog command. In a backlog command, you separate each command with a semicolon and then Tasmoda will process them in order before trying to restart. For instance, for changing our Wi-Fi network like before, we'd instead use the backlog command backlog SSID1 my new network semicolon password1 my new password. That's going to prevent your Tasmoda device from rebooting until all the commands have been issued. So your Wi-Fi SSID and your password will change together and your device will be able to properly connect to your new network. In the very rare event that your specific need isn't already baked into the Tasmoda firmware, you can also get a little more advanced when set up rules to let Tasmoda handle some logic. The Tasmoda rules engine is event-based, so you'll always need some trigger to begin the rule. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to do some advanced control of a fan, and we wanted that fan to turn on whenever the temperature was above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and then off whenever the temperature was below, say, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. If we had a device with a relay and a temperature sensor, we could write a rule for that. We'll start our rule by telling Tasmoda which of the three Tasmoda rule sets we're defining, which in this case is going to be rule one. And then our trigger is going to be the temperature of an AM2301 temperature sensor. So we'll start out our rule by typing rule one on AM2301 temperature is greater than 100, and then we'll give it an action or something to do. So we'll add do power one, one. And since we don't need to do anything else on that trigger, we'll end the statement with the word end on. Then in the same rule, we can add another trigger to turn the fan back off if the temperature ever goes below 90. So our final rule will end up looking like this. The last thing you need to do after defining rules is to turn that specific rule on. 
So to do that, we're gonna type in rule one space one and then hit enter. You can even use rules to allow devices to talk to each other without the need for a smart home hub. By changing just a few things in that previous rule set, we can have the device with the temperature sensor issue a command to a separate device to turn a relay on or off. To do this, we would utilize the web send command to send an HTTP request and it would end up looking something like this. There are tons of different triggers that can be used to start your rules, and you can use any of the commands we talked about earlier as actions, including the backlog command. So you can have a single trigger cause multiple actions, and you can even add delays in between them. There's a great page in the Tasmoda documentation that has different rules that you can utilize as templates for your own specific needs. As you can see, Tasmoda is an absolutely insanely powerful firmware that gives you local control and thousands of configurable options that don't require any knowledge of C++ and are relatively intuitive to use. I am a firm believer that MQTT and Home Assistant are the best way to manage IoT devices. But as you can see, the native Amazon Echo integration, the ability to send commands over HTTP, and the rules that can create automations directly on your devices makes Tasmoda a great choice even if you don't have a smart home hub. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button so it gets shared with other people who haven't found the channel yet. Thank you to all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for continuing to support my channel and allowing me to make videos like this one that feature free and open source software like Tasmoda and Home Assistant. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.